Hey there, welcome back to the channel. It's the second video related to I2C. The previous one, we have created the working communication using the write and the write read. But this week, we are going to dive in and make I2C a little bit more low level. So let's dive in. In this video, we are going to build a bit more low level I2C connection with our LSM 303 AGR sensor. This solution is aligned with the RAS discovery book with a difference that I won't be using the ITM but SWD for printing the messages on the host terminal. As you see, I have imported the semi-hosting. Starting from the import list and the cargo tom file, there is nothing new. So let's digest the main function. We are obtaining the device peripherals, grabbing the pointers to flash and RCC, configuring the clocks, splitting the GPIOB and making our PB6 pin the clock line and PB7 our SDA line. In the line 34, we are enabling the I2C at 400 kHz for I2C1. The line 35 is probably the most interesting. It's a coercion where we force a pointer to be interpreted as I2C1 register block, as then we can access all the necessary I2C registers. One interesting note is if you are using the DLHC sensor instead of the AGR, it has an init function that I'm not using for this example. Now it's time for the loop body. Starting with a fancy print, the step one is to ask a magnetometer and wait for the flag to be cleared. Once the flag is cleared, we can specify which register we would like to ask the magnetometer for. And yet again, we have to wait for the flag to be cleared. Okay, let's take a pause because I feel I have just jumped a little bit too far too quickly and you may be thinking how the hell I'm coming up with all those weird registers and how do I even know what flag I have to wait to be cleared and which flag I have to pass, which register I have to use. So to know all those details we need to go to the reference manual of the processor that we are using and those reference manuals at the early days are quite overwhelming because they have 1100 pages but no one expects you to read all of it. In our case what we have to do is let's just search for RxDR and this is going to provide us the I2C registers and here we have all the registers that are related to I2C communications. What we can see in those I2C register section is what is the responsibility of each register, what are the default values and how do we have to configure them. The correct order of the configuration is specified. In the same document, just a few pages up, we can see the I2C master mode, how to initialize it and um, a little bit more details about the clock, but most importantly, is how to really make the master communication working. That you're defining those address bit, you define the slave or the peripheral address, that's why it's SAT, double D. We define the transfer direction, this RD, right? So everything is here, and I know the code looks so much neater, but we have to unfortunately, or fortunately, go through this reference manual, digest it, and transfer this document into a working code and probably this is the most challenging part of working with embedded. Additionally to that you have a community that is fairly big and I believe a lot of questions have been asked and most of them have been answered. So let's go back to our coding exercise. The step three is to build a buffer, in our case size one. The step four is to start listening by modifying the CR2 register. In a loop, in a line 70, we read each byte and push the value to the buffer. We have to wait for the bit to be cleared, and once it's cleared, we are pushing the value. Last but not least, is to make sure that we are broadcasting the stop. We end the program with another fancy print, making sure that we got what we expect to receive. Let's, in this case, run OpenOCD in one terminal and cargo run 
my board is connected to my laptop and we should see 04F receiving value 64. So seems like it's working. The last thing for today is to take a look how this communication can be visualized and decoded using the oscilloscope. Let's turn the oscilloscope and connect the probe number one to the clock line and probe number two to the data line on the board. The oscilloscope is configured to be triggered with the serial I2C protocol on any new start and I'm going to press the reset button to initialize the code and start the I2C connection. As we see the oscilloscope correctly captured the I2C communication. We can see which section is the write, which section is the read and the write and read values 0x4f, 0x40 correspond to what we have seen in the terminal. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching today's video. I would love if you can like it, leave the comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions or ideas for the future videos and most importantly please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Before we go I'm going to toss back to one of the previous videos. Let's talk maybe about whole grades. Yes, so let's talk about whole grades. They are complicated but extremely necessary. So see you next week. Bye.